you get a better idea of why so many people want to come to Sieges. What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona and more. Today we're exploring Sieges, about 40 minutes south of Barcelona, a beautiful seaside city with a lot to see, so I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do come in to Sieges, what you'll probably do is you'll take the train, you'll end up just right here, and then getting into the city center is not too hard. You just head straight down the road here, and I'll take you through there in just a minute. But before you get out of the main plaza, what you wanna do is come over, check out the sign with Sieges welcoming you. You can see it right there. It says, hello to the white village, and that's what you'll notice as we're walking through. A lot of these white, buildings kind of very mediterranean very reminiscent of the south of spain as well it's got amazing museums and it's got this beautiful blue sea we're right on the coast spectacular views you'll see a little bit later that are going to kiss those beaches and they hope that the fragrance of sea just takes and stays with you so you remember this place but like i said from the train station right here the easiest way to head in is just right down the street so let's check it out So like I said before, Sieges is not too far from Barcelona. It's about 40 minutes on the train. And why you would come down here is they've got beautiful beaches to check out. So in that summertime, it's a spectacular spot. But it's also, like Barcelona, really well known for its modernism. You can even see, we'll see some of the buildings as we're walking through. Big history with modernism here as we get into the old city. We'll take a look at that. It's got great nightlife, restaurants, bars, and it's a very gay friendly city as well. So there's a lot to do over here. A lot of people like to get down to Sieges and you can do it in a full day, you can do it in a half day, but that train makes it really easy. You can see more of the houses here. And what I would do is when you get to the first street, San Isidro, I would head down to the right so we can see just a little bit more. There's some other houses there. And you can see here, in Sieges, not a bike path, but a walking path. You can see some of these houses in this area. And you can even see the ceramic roses, kind of in that mosaic style as well. So what you'll see are a lot of buildings, like I said, in that modernist style. And then even the nocentism, the nocentista style here, which is gonna be right after modernism, which is basically like a return to the Catalan origins of things. If modernism was kind of looking more internationally, you've got the idea of returning to the Catalan origins of things. And you can see the hotel right there. So what we'll do is we'll take a left here and we'll get into more of the commercial center, which will take us straight over to the historic part. And Sieges really is a nice area to walk around apart from those beaches. It does offer a lot to see while you're moving through the city. A lot of times cities have peñas, which is the place where you can go and you can support different clubs. This is the Peña Blaugrana here in Sitges, so that's for the football club Barcelona, like the local supporter bar. We're gonna get into the main roads here that are for a lot of different shops, a lot of different things. And you'll see when you get here, there's a lot going on. See, so just does offer a lot. Hey. 
there's also quite a big expat community. So a lot of people have either retired here or have maybe second houses down here as well. When you get to the Plaza de Cap de la Villa, you have some different options to go around. But what I would recommend is taking Carre Mayor here over to the left. So it's kind of like the major street to the main, the main way. You see there's a lot of different shops, different bars as well. And this will take us right into that old historic center basically to where the main things are to see if you're coming in to do a little tourism. You can see a mixture of different shops. Some of them are big chain stores and then some of them are local places around here to Sitges. One of the nice things you have are all these kind of side roads to walk through. another one of these little side streets that runs down and that'll take you more closer to the water directly. Now this is always a nice little through street to get from that historic center to that main commercial spot. And it's pretty easy to navigate if you're walking around. It's got a nice spot to remember to get back to the train station a little bit later. A lot of the bars are being set up. You have one spot right here that I've always really enjoyed. It's got, when it's open, it's got a lot of pinchos right on the counter you can grab. But one of the things that caught my attention the last time I was here and then made a stop is the sign that says, we have the worst vermouth in the world. Gotta try it. You can see that made us go in, so it works out. Assuming other people go in as well. But it wasn't that bad. You can see, like I said, those little side streets. You can see straight down to the water. But we're going to continue up. It's so like I said, there's quite a bit to see when you get just up the hill here. So we're coming up to a little plaza with not only the town hall, but some other tourist attractions as well. You can see behind me, we've got the town hall. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head around and check out a little bit more of the area. And then we'll get over to the church, which is like the iconic thing in Sicha, is kind of that skyline with that church right on the beach, right on the coast. If you've seen pictures, you've seen that as well. But why we're gonna go around is because right here on the side of the town hall, you have the Casa Bacardi. So not a lot of people know this. Maybe you've been over to San Juan and you've seen in Puerto Rico, the Bacardi factory, but you've got the Bacardi house right here, which they do a lot of tours. Right now it's only open on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but they do some tours, they've got the museum 
kind of store on the inside. You can check out a little bit of the history. But a lot of times when people ask about the different bats, and you can know, you know that logo of the bat for Bacardi, a lot of times when people ask why there's so many bats around even Barcelona or Catalonia in general, it's a legend that dates back to the, to the Middle Ages. And when you had the crown of Aragon trying to expand over to Valencia, they were trying to take over an area that was controlled by the Muslims. And there was a legend and rumors that said as long as the Muslims were in control, bats were going to be flying around the area. So when the Christians were attacking one night, there was a surprise attack by the Muslims that set off all these bats in the evening, woke up all the Christians, alerted them basically to the fact that they were being, that they were being attacked. And when they went on to win the battle, win the war, take over Valencia, Jaume the first, he wants to put the bat in his sigil. You can't thank a bat any other way. So he takes the bat and puts it in this sigil, kind of like it's a little bit of good luck, prosperity. And so now that has always become like this big symbol here in, in Catalonia. And so when Bacardi comes over from Sitges, moves over to Cuba and starts that rum business, you get the bat logo inside the rum. So not a lot of people know, but you guys have that idea of the Bacardi house, which is, we just walked around the city hall, you got the Bacardi house right there. And you can see Casa de la Vila, the city hall, right behind me here in Sitges. And now we've come up the road, Calle Mayor. We've come around the building. And what we're gonna do, you can see the church in the back here, we're going to head over to the church and get some of the views that you have to see when you're here in Sitges. And one of the other things you might notice as we're walking through is they have their history and legends throughout the city. And what's really nice is they're put in these kind of ceramics all throughout. So it might be just little anecdotes, it might be poems, like you can see, uh, and it might even be the history. So not only the street names are written like this, but you also have a little bit of the history. So you can see that the church, the Bartholomew Church, this was founded the 19th of July, 1672. And so that's what you have, and it talks about uh, the war, the Reaper's War as well, and what happened over here. And so when you come out to the plaza, I'll get over into the sun here and you can see the facade of the church. You can see that coming in right now. You should be able to see up to the top. And it's, like I said before, it's kind of this iconic image of Sitges. Anybody that's walking along the beach, looking up, you always wanna take pictures of this. And so what you guys can see what I'm looking at right now, you get a better idea of why so many people want to come to Sitges. Obviously that facade really nice on the beach, but you're on the coast. You're right there on the coast. And this is what draws in a lot of people. It's exactly what draws in a lot of people. And this maritime walk will head straight through the city down the coast. And you can find restaurants all along the way, chiringuitos, places to sit down on the beach. Beaches are pretty empty. Right now, it's still a little bit early to even go in the water. You can see some kayaks out there, but these beaches will get a lot of people. And there's more on the other side that we'll see in just a little bit. But you can see they're not so big. They're not really wide beaches, not as wide as Barcelona, uh, but you get really, really great views. All right. You can see the church still right there. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to head down quickly down the stairs because there's a famous statue that you'll want to get a picture in front of when you come over to Sitges as well. It's the mermaid, La Sirena. So you've got these beautiful views out to the church down the steps. You can see it coming in the back. We'll hop on down. Just look at that sea. So we're down a little bit closer and you can see not only the statue, 
but you can see out to those beaches as well. And so I think a lot of people like to take the picture out with the statue and everybody likes to touch the hand. You can see the discoloration that's in there, but everybody touches the hand when they're down over here. And then we get even better views out to the church. And like I said, I said it before, but it's kind of that skyline that's just so iconic here in Sieges. And what we'll do is we'll walk across the coast here around the side and we'll get over to the area where the museums are and everything. We'll talk about kind of what makes Sieges so popular. We'll get closer. Very windy out here. And very close to the water. You can see the, those waves coming in. This is one of the things that makes the walk so nice. Just right on the coast, and you can see out all the way up the coast as well. And out to that beautiful Mediterranean. You can see big spot for pictures we were talking about as well with all the history written you can see the different ideas of different little parts and right here this is talking about a battle 1797 and you've got one of the six cannons that are left that would have been up on these walls over here and when they were shooting out the British who were coming in they shot out they were able to avoid the siege and the attack from the Brits have these benches here that a lot of people like to sit down on and enjoy the views you got that Sun coming in as you can see so we're walking through like I was talking about just up the coast and when you're coming down to Sieges on the train there's all sorts of different places that you can stop or other towns that you can go to and they're gonna have those beaches as well little places to stop and grab a bite and what we're walking into right now is more kind of like the museum area right? you can see a lot of the idea of that kind of modernist overtone and like we said before um, Sieges has a really big modernist history and it's more than anything because of Santiago Rusignol who if you go to Barcelona you'll talk about quite a bit he's one of those guys that goes over to the Chateau in Paris he's over in the Montmartre area and he brings back this idea realistically of modernism into Barcelona and then he's living over here so it's you know all these different festivals that he's bringing back at the end of the 19th beginning of the 20th century right around that time it's coming into Barcelona but a lot of that comes down to sieges and so you have different modernist festivals even right here and one thing I want to point out is the sign that says without Rusignol Barcelona wouldn't be what it is right and sieges wouldn't even exist and so you can see big big name there but one of those ideas of even starting one of the guys that's going to really help to start the Quatre Gats restaurant in Barcelona. So you'll see all this idea of the museums here that you can get into. This little pathway here leads you right back up to the town hall where we were. And then you have these streets that we can walk down. And it's really something to come over and see love these wooden doors right here and then you have kind of the capitals and the decoration the different animals the nature that's going to be in all of these windows so there's a couple museums over here but you can see um, basically what were houses the main museum that you're going to want to check out is Cauferrat and that's actually where Santiago Rusiño lived and it's the one that he's going to he's basically going to donate it to Sieges and that's where it's going to become the museum he kind of left everything in there there's another there's a library even here named after him so you can see how important he is 
here. This is the Maricel Palace, which is the museum right now. And they've got the modernist Catalan book series going on in exhibit. So you can see that white kind of color of those houses that we were talking about before. Yeah, those are really nice. Yeah, so you'll see a lot, of, a lot of street artists and a lot of vendors. And you can see these are actually really, really nice. Some beautiful insects right here. I was told to stop and, and check them out, so we're going to. Where are we in? These are pretty nice. There's a lot of different places you can find around here, those smaller little shops or whatnot. But this is the office that you come over to. You can get the tickets to the museums. There's about three different museums. But the Kauferrat house right here uh, is the one you're going to want to, the main one you're going to want to see. And you can see the plaques that are dedicated to Kauferrat and Santiago Rusignol. And get you a view kind of just up into the street and again you can see similar kind of things you'll see in Barcelona with the dragons and the forged iron which was one of the main traits within modernism but also the different styles of kind of gothic and everything with a little bit of a twist of that Sieges white house and you can even see I'll show you just walking back through the streets you can see even more of that but if we continue on down you come out to the other beaches, the other side here. You've got some really nice lookout points. And the water again. So a lot of times people ask about, you know, why they would come to Sieges. Hopefully by now you've figured that out, kind of seen the idea of what it has to offer, why you would come over here. Got all of that. Got the palm trees, more of the beach that connects on down, a little bit more activity going on, and then the lookout points. And one of the things they have is the statue right here, which is a camera. And so we said before the modernism festivals were the big thing that brought people down. Right now, what they have basically every October are the Sitges Film Festivals. And so this is dedicated to that film festival. You can even see the date, if you can, down there. It's 2007 this was inaugurated in. But you've got the idea of the camera, the shoot, big film festival that happens down here. More around horror and showing all of that off. Uh, but it gets really, really popular and it runs throughout that entire month. And you've got your feet right in there. So we'll stand in the same spot. You got that view just out there. And that was just only part of Sieges. We didn't hit up the beaches. We didn't see kind of some of those other back streets. But if you are coming over from that train station just down to here, you can see that walk, what's worth it. You've got that Casa Bacardi, if you want to check it out. You've got those different museums, especially Ca oh, uh, especially Cal Ferrat, uh, and all sorts of different things to see. Obviously, if you're coming over here at some point, you'll get to the beaches, hang out over there. Beautiful, beautiful city. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed our walk through Sieges, exploring a little bit more. If you haven't done so already, remember to subscribe to the channel. Check out some of the other videos. They're going to help you get better prepared for your next trip to Barcelona or keep you connected after you leave. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.